Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics. This is part two of my user input series where I will be covering the keyboard. When making a game, it is often required to get input from the user. The most common form of this input is usually the keyboard. For this reason, Bevy provides two abstractions in order to acquire keyboard inputs when you include the input plugin into your game. One abstraction gives you direct access to the events sent from your operating system to the game and is used to create the higher level abstraction that most people will use, the input key code resource that allows for easy access to whether a key is pressed or not. In this video, I'll be covering both methods of getting the keyboard input, starting with the more common input key code approach. After that, I'll move on to the more explicit but versatile events keyboard input. For ease of finding what you're looking for, this video has been split into chapters. Key codes, input key codes, keyboard inputs, scan codes, and an actual example of where you might use this. Bevy provides an enum called key code that represents all the keys you'll find on a standard US keyboard. If you're making a game that needs access to non-standard keys, then you will have to resort to using scan codes for these cases, but you will lose some of the ease of use provided by using key codes. As seen on the screen, I have key code space and key code A. I would have showed the whole enum, but there are a lot of key codes. It is important to note that key codes represent the symbol on the keyboard provided by the OS and will change with your keyboard layout. And a scan code represents the physical key pressed and not the symbol. Note that holding shift and caps lock will not change the key code or scan code provided to your to your game by the operating system. The numbers above the keyboard are treated differently than the numpad numbers. And numlock will have no effect on these either. So if you want any of these behaviors to take effect, you'll have to explicitly implement them yourself. As far as I'm aware, beyond just allowing you to check to see if shift is hold, I do not believe Bevy provides access to caps lock and numlock and scroll lock and other keyboard toggles at this time. The most common and easiest approach to get access to the keyboard is to use the res input key codes in your system parameters. This struct allows you to check if a key has been pressed, released or held since the last frame, or iterate over these groups of keys. This is covered in more detail in the first video of this mini-series where I go into the implementation of the input struct that this is a wrapper that wraps around the, the key codes here. Thanks to the implementation of the input struct, getting a key press is as simple as calling the appropriate method and providing that to an if statement to run your code, as pictured on screen. At the end of the video, I'll give a working example of where this might be useful. If you are checking for lots of key presses and would like some cleaner code, it is possible to iterate over all keys that meet the corresponding group's criteria using a match statement to perform some specific action. It is important to note that this approach is only valid if you are only checking a single key, otherwise you have to do additional key check logic in t inside each match, and that you don't mind when double logic is run, such as if you have up and W both running the forward logic, doing it through an iterator will, and match statement will result in holding both up and W, resulting in double movement speed. To get over this limitation, Bevy provides the any prefix to its input checks. This will allow you to provide multiple key codes that can be iterated over and will only return one statement if true. It is possible to use Boolean logic to join multiple checks together in order to provide more versatile input checks. These just get complicated quickly. In this example, I have a check to see if spacebar has been pressed and if any of the movement keys have been pressed to activate moving jump logic. If for some reason your game requires the order in which the keys were pressed, it is required to go one layer of abstraction deeper and use the keyboard input. Though at this point it is still possible to use key codes to distinguish keys since keyboard inputs contain the corresponding key code if it exists. This was shown in the first part of the mini-series. Once you have included event reader key code input in your system's parameters, using the key code inputs is as simple as iterating over the events like any other. It is possibly a good idea to include a custom resource to keep track of what you need to know about the keyboard presses at this point. Similar to Bevy's input struct, since keyboard input does not include information such as shift and caps lock conditions. If you are planning on making your game compatible with non-US keyboards, 
it may be required that you dive into the realm of key codes. Key codes are simply a 32-bit number that represents what key was pressed. These codes, these key codes were traditionally used in old computers to represent the physical position of the key on the keyboard using a matrix array of contacts. This was then converted by the operating system in software to the corresponding key. This is a way to distinguish between keys that have the same value but are different physical locations on the keyboard, such as the two enter keys, but doesn't distinguish where the caps lock was held or, uh, or shift is pressed. This is also why on some keyboards it is not possible to hold down multiple keys unless they match certain groupings. This was to do with how the physical layer of the keyboard mapped internally, meaning that certain keys were on the same matrix and pressing two of them at once confused the keyboard into not being able to distinguish which key was pressed. The key code input also includes which action was taken on the key, being pressed or being released. It is not always the best idea to rely on these events coming from the keyboard outright to determine a keystroke from the user. From my testing, it seems that there's somewhat of a random delay between the pressing of the first key and the and then a subsequent sending of additional key codes. My testing results in about 30 frames from holding a key before the operating system sent a second press every other frame and occasionally every frame or every third frame. I'm unaware if this is the operating system or keyboard specific. From what I've read on Wikipedia, it appears to that it is more likely to be a, a keyboard manufacturer decision on whether it sends a constant hold signal or a hold and release signal. I believe the delay of 30 frames is to allow for quick typing without having to worry about a double key press. This can be seen by opening a text editor and holding down a key. There will be a significantly longer delay between typing the first character and all subsequent characters of the hold. It would be interesting to see how different operating systems and different keyboards respond. On screen now is a simple system that if you run in Bevy, will be able to allow you to collect the test results. Please leave a comment down below with what your results and findings were and what operating system and keyboard manufacturer you were using. As you can see in the console here, when I press the key, there is a delay between the console spewing out the inputs as the first one appears and then half a second later, the rest start to scroll in much faster. By including the, the input key codes struct and printing what keys are currently being pressed, it is possible to actually keep track of how many frames have passed, I, how many times this system is run, and tally that up in order to get much more accurate readings on how long your keys were held. On screen now is a simple example of a player controller. It more or less consists of a system that uses a marker struct called player to get the transform of the player, and then it takes the input resource and then by unwrapping the player so that I have immutable access, I have mutable access to the transform, I then check to see if the W, up, or numpad 8 key are pressed. If so, I increase the Y by one. I then repeat this for each other direction and its corresponding keys. It is also possible to do something like keep track of a speed variable and add a check if shift is held in order to increase speed when shift is held. Or a boolean local that toggles with caps lock. I am yet unaware if Bevy allows you to actively check to see if caps lock is pressed by the operating system. Or whether you would have to only have it toggle directly in your game. This kind of limitation can be seen in games like Kerbal Space Program, where the fine control is only toggled. It is never actually checked to see if your caps lock is already pressed, which means that every launch you'll have to be toggling your caps lock back and forth. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you in part three of this mini-series, The Mouse.